Hello, I'm Adam Kolb and you're watching BeachCast. Today, we're gonna to be creating a delete handler middleware with Zend Expressive. So stick around and we'll get right on that. All right, so as I said, today we're gonna to be creating a, a delete middleware. Now, I wanted to, I have to say some things ahead of time though. First off, what we're going to do today is very, very dangerous for your application. Um, I'm not going to be creating a lot of security around the delete functionality. Today, we're just going to be creating the delete functionality itself. There's not gonna be any validation. There's not gonna be any security. Please do not create this script and put it on the internet. Um, somebody will find it and delete your data. Uh, so, so now that all being said, I think the next thing that I should say is I know many people who have applications that do not even create a delete functionality or not a delete functionality in the way that you would think about it. Instead, what they do is they create an update functionality that flags a record as deleted. They don't actually delete the record. Now in this uh, video, I'm going to be creating something that actually deletes the record. Um, uh, your, your mileage may vary how your customers want you to create this, whether you're working full time for somebody or whether you're being hired by somebody to create something. Um, that is entirely up to you and entirely up to them. Uh, but in this video, again, I'm going to be showing how uh, you can use a, a call to a middleware to delete a record from the database, and, but use this with caution. Okay, so now that I've said all the disclaimers, uh, please act accordingly, and uh, now let's go ahead and, and create this. So as you can see on my screen here, I've got the scratches already ex expanded. We've got the... Um, I've got Docker already fired up. My, my uh, DB as well as my web uh, containers are up and running. And um, again, I've got, my, I've got my scratches here. Now I've created a new scratch is the announcement hyphen delete. And, and it is just an HTTP call using the delete method to the URL and excuse me. And then of course carrying the UUID of the record that we want to delete. And, and then it is just expecting content type JSON or application JSON as the return. So it's just a simple HTTP call. Now, of course, it wouldn't succeed now. That record does not exist in the database currently, but we, you know, we'll come back and we'll edit this to carry the ID of a record that we actually do want to delete. Of course, I've already got my, my put, my get, and my post uh, scratches here for doing those individual calls and I've, I've named them all accordingly. They are, they are all uh, uh, based on the announcements uh, module or the announcements endpoint as, as the case may be in the API. So, so we're gonna go ahead and do this. Now in the database, first I'm going to uh, query the announcements. I'm double clicking on the announcements in the, in the database panel in uh, PHP Storm and it opens up a, just a return of all the records in the announcements table. And we can see we've got them all here. They've all got their UUIDs and, and, and everything's there. So I'm just gonna leave that hang here for a little bit <clears throat> because uh, what I wanna do now is go ahead and create the, um, create the middleware. Now, you may recall in the past, uh, in past videos, we did get a Zend Expressive application up and working and we had uh, the availability of the Expressive uh, toolkit uh, in, uh, or, or yeah, the, the, the toolkit. So, uh, in that I'm able to go to the terminal and, and then I can issue a command, uh, for a uh, composer expressive list by doing that, it brings up the, the various commands that we have available to us, uh, through the, through the, uh, command line toolkit for, for Zend expressive. Now, what we're going to be using is we're going to use the, uh, handler, uh, colon create uh, functionality of the expressive toolkit. And then we're gonna tell it the namespace of where we want the, the handler to be created. Um, now I'm gonna go ahead and just go up a couple because I had already issued this previously. So what I've got here is I'm calling composer. 
I'm issuing it the expressive command because in Composer, in the composer.json, the um, Zend expressive uh, skeleton application already has the command specified there in, in the JSON file. And then we're issuing the command handler create and we're giving it the namespace that we want this handler to be created in. And in this case, it's announcements slash handler slash uh, announcements delete handler. And then, uh, of course, the, the, the toolkit is then going to go ahead and create those two or the two files for us that are required, uh, one being the, the factory and the other one being the handler itself. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. It creates those. It tells me that it created those, created the factory, created the handler. So now over here in my files, if I expand out the source announcements, source, uh, open up the handlers, we'll see that there are two new files here. There's the, the uh, announcements delete handler factory and the announcements delete handler. Now let's take a look at the factory first. Now this is just because we use the toolkit to, to create this, it is just a, a very empty file. It's just uh, the basics that you need for a handler factory. It's not actually being used as a factory. It is just passing through straight to the announcement delete handler. So, but we need to add some more content in here. And what we're going to add in here is, well, first, before I do that, um, I do need to, to talk about a, a little bit about how the routing is hap is happening here or, or how the how the well the routing already happened because we created the routes delegator before long ago in previous episodes and uh, I'll, I'll link to that here up above. Um, I already have the delete route existing here. Uh, I had it pre-existing because it didn't exist at that time, but I created the route for it and it's announcement slash, and then of course there's the regular expression for the UUID. And then it calls the announcements delete handler. And then of course we got a name for it. So within the application, we can call announcements.delete and it'll know, um, it'll know what to, to, to use. It'll know what, uh, what route to use uh, based on that name. So that's the routes delegator. Now, if we go up to the configuration, um, the, the toolkit, the Zend Expressive Toolkit, creates a file here called Zend Expressive Tooling Factories, right? And it, or .global .php. But in there, it actually adds the factories to our dependencies um, and, and imports them. So anytime that announcements delete handler is called, it, it, it knows within the container to call the announcements delete handler factory. Right, so it knows to call the factory uh, when we ask it to to call the, the the handler. So now, one thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to remove this. I'm gonna I'm gonna cut it. I'm not actually deleting it. I'm gonna cut it, and and then uh, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to go ahead and copy that over to my config provider for the module itself for the announcements module. I, I like keeping my, my dependencies and things like that within the individual module. So that way, if the module were to go away, then so would any of the settings with it. So in, in this case, um, I just need to do a little bit of cleanup because since I'm within the module, I don't need to tell it the module. I just need to tell it the handlers and, and what to call. So now, so now I've got this factory uh, being pulled in to the uh, container through the configuration within the given module. Um, now you can, by all means, uh, if you want to continue using the, the Zend Expressive Tooling and you want those things to be created in the, in the configs, that's perfectly fine. Again, I just like for cleanliness sake, I like them to be within the module. That way, if I get rid of the module, I'm also getting rid of all these configurations. So then my container doesn't get junked up with things that it's not being used. Um, so again, your mileage may vary. You may want to do it differently. This is just the way that I do it. So now I've got that within here. So now the application will know where to find the, the delete handler factory anytime I call the delete, delete handler. Okay, so now back to the factory. So now in the factory, um, I want to make some changes. And, and those are, I want to call in, first I want to call in the doctrine uh, ORM. 
I want to call in the doctor and uh, ORM entity manager. And then I also want to call in the Zend Expressive HAL response factory and the resource generator. Um, so, so again, again, now we're able to use the doctor and entity manager for the database connectivity. And we're also able to use Zend Expressive HAL to create the HAL automatically. Now I may remove that from here later because in this demonstration, I'm not actually going to be using it. I'm putting it here, but I'm not actually going to be using it. Um, I'm just going to be injecting it into the handler uh, with the intent of using it at a later time. But for today, I'm not really going to be using it. So now uh, another thing that I want to do is now that I've got those being imported into the factory, I now want to update my return um, for, the, for the delete handler factory to then uh, call through to the uh, uh, announcements delete handler and I wanna pass in three dependencies. I wanna pass in the entity manager, I wanna pass in the how response factory, and I also want to pass in the resource generator. So I'm injecting those three things into the de delete handler whenever the factory's called. All right, that's all we have to do in the factory for now. Uh, now keep in mind that even though I am sending in the how response factory, and even though I am sending in the resource generator, I'm not actually using those. I'm not actually going to use those in, in the, uh, the handler yet, at least not in this video. So now let me go ahead and, and, and open up that delete handler and I'm going to close the, the handler factory. I don't need it anymore. I've finished updating it. Now the rest of my work for this, uh, for this video needs to be done in this file. All right. So, so some things that we need to do first off is handle the, the things that are being injected in. So I need to create some fields and I need to also create the, uh, also need to create the constructor that will capture those items. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and specify those. I'm gonna put in my fields here at the entity manager, uh, put in the uh, how response factory, All right, and then I'm also gonna put in the uh, resource generator. Oop. All right, so now I've got my fields there. Those are the fields that I'm expecting to be injected into and in, into this, uh, uh, this, this class, this object. So, so what I need to do now is uh, to create my function. So I need to create the construct. And in the construct, I'm then going to be expecting the entity manager. So we got doctrine ORM entity manager. And I don't need that. I'm just going to. Okay, so we've got that as, oh, you know what? I'm putting these in the wrong place. All right getting ahead of myself here. So let me remove that. Those actually need to be in as arguments. So got the entity manager. Next item that I need is going to be the how response factory. Oh. How response factory. And then thirdly, I'm going to bring in the resource Uh, generator. Yep, how uh, resource generator. All right, so then we're going to put that there. Okay, so now we've got our three arguments being injected into our uh, being injected into our constructor, and now we've got to populate the fields based on those coming in. So let's do that. So let's. Uh, we've got the entity manager, and that is going to be. Oops. Entity manager is going to populate that. And then we want to do the, the how resource factory. And that is going to be the how resource factory. And then of course the final one, which is going to be the resource generator. We're gonna populate that with resource generator. Okay, so now our constructor's done, our fields are done, our injection is happening. Um, so now we can start building out the meat of, uh, of this handler. And, and in the meat of the handler, the first thing we want to do is, um, 
first I want to initialize because I'm expect I'm going to be passing a response in this case. So I want to initialize me my response or result. And I'm going to do that like so. And then after that, uh, I want to then I need to specify my my repository, right? So we've got the we've got the entity manager being brought in, but I need to specify the repository. What repository are we going to use to delete this record? So I'm I'm specifying that entity repository, and then from the entity manager, I'm getting repository, and I'm specifying I want the announcements entity to be used. Okay, so now we've got that in there. Now one of the things that I want to do is is I want to then go ahead and find the record that we're going to be deleting because I want to be able to verify that it actually exists, right? So we want to pull the entity through the entity repository, find this record based on the ID that's being passed in, right? And we're using the get attributes to get that. So we're expecting it to be in the URL string. Um, and then now if it doesn't exist, we want to make sure we handle that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check and see if the entity is empty, then of course I'm gonna return an error. Now I'm being a little bit verbose here um, and I'm passing an error and I'm passing a, in the JSON, I'm going to be, well, first off, I'm gonna be passing an HTTP result of 404 because the record doesn't exist. Uh, but then I'm also gonna put a JSON, uh, a JSON content here or a payload that I'm returning back to say that there's an error and give details for the error. So that way, if somebody wanted to write some code around that and capture that error and output it, they would be able to do so. Um, but in this case, I'm just doing just a plain return. Hey, that record doesn't exist, so obviously we can't delete it. And, and that's what's being returned here. Um, now, of course, in this, you would want to put other validation in here and make sure that the user's logged in, make sure that they have permission to do delete. Uh, you wanna make sure that they own the record in some cases, so they can only delete records that are owned by them. Um, but we're not gonna go into the detail in this video. Just know that that would typically be there. Now, now if the record exists, then we want to go ahead and try to remove it. So through the entity manager, we're gonna call the remove functionality and we're gonna pass it the entity because of course we know now what entity we want to delete. So we're gonna pass it that ent entity and then we're gonna tell the entity manager to flush, which means commit those changes, therefore deleting uh, what's there. And then, uh, and then of course, if not, if there's some sort of exception, go ahead and, uh, and output that, right? Go ahead and output it. Now, I notice here that I've got a few things that are, that are kind of going wrong. I've got some, uh, PHP Storm is telling me that the JSON response is not able to find that. It's not able to find the remove, the flush. It's not able to find the exception. So what I'm gonna do now is, is pull in some additional uh, items that I haven't pulled in yet. Um, so one of those is going to be, of course, the entity itself, right? I need to pull in the entity itself. And then after I pulled in the entity, I also need to bring in the exception, right? I've got the ORM entity manager, but I also need to add the exception so that way we can output any possible problems. And then of course, I want to also uh, pull in the Zend Expressive how, actually I've got those there, so those are good. Um, and that should do it. So now that I've had, now that I have those import statements in there, um, so now, uh, uh, PHP Storm's not liking that, Jason. Oh, okay, I see why. Uh, because I didn't, uh, I, I didn't yet bring in the JSON response. So now I added that in here, Zen Deoctoros uh, response, JSON response. Uh, because I'm doing it as, as just outputting JSON, I'm using uh, the, the Zen Deoctoros to do that. Now in the future, in future videos, not only will I show you how to protect these things and do validation and user login and, and also do um, uh, other things, I'll also show you how to automate the JSON response to be a lot easier um, uh, than just doing this JSON response. It'll be a lot cleaner and, and output error codes a lot more friendly. So you don't have to specify them in the code. that will automatically be specified based on certain criteria. And, and we'll do that in the future, but that's not today because I, I try to keep these videos in bite-sized chunks. So now that I've got um, now that I've got the error accounted for, if if it doesn't go into that catch, that means it actually deleted the record. 
So, so what I'm going to do is, um, because there's not really going to be any how that would be returned here, because there's no record, right? The record's been deleted. Instead, what I'm going to do here is, is, for now, I'm going to just build an array here um, where I'm outputting the announcement. I'm putting one record in there, which is, says deleted ID, and then I'm going to tell the ID that was actually deleted. So the payload is just going to say that. It's going to say the deleted ID. Um, because there's nothing to forward to. I can't really forward to a view because the record doesn't exist. Can't really do generate a lot of how automatically, uh, at least not easily, because the record doesn't exist. And then I'm just going to output the JSON response in this case. So it's going to stay nice and clean. Okay, so now uh, let's go ahead and test this out. Uh, what I'm going to do is open up my scratch now. I, uh, first thing I want to do is I want to do a post and I'm going to create a new record, right? Um, I'm going to uh, close this delete handler. Now, in the in the database, we already know those are there. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new record. And by calling, okay, so that worked. So uh, we got a 200 OK. And over here, if I refresh, I should have a new record now. And I do. I have this last record here. So now I need this, uh, for the sake of the delete, I need to copy and, and uh, copy that uh, UUID and then over here now, I can open up the scratch for the delete method and I can update that with the UUID of the record we just created. And then if I execute this now, I should get, uh, I get a response code 200 and it tells me deleted ID because of course we specified this in the array. So we JSON, the JSON was created specifying the ID that was actually deleted. If I come over here to the database, and if I refresh, that last record should go away, and it does. So we've completed our delete handler middleware. So there you have it. Um, that's all there is for this video. Remember, do not create this and put it out in production or even put it on the internet because it would not be safe. Um, but that being said, the delete functionality is complete. Later in, in future videos, we'll, we'll see how to, to uh, secure this, how to do it with a, a little bit more validation and things like that, as well as returning error codes in a lot more automated fashion. Um, I don't know the order I'm going to be doing those videos yet, but they will be forthcoming. Uh, so if you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment. Tell me you liked it. Also, uh, remember to subscribe down below so you're uh, told about future videos as they come out. And, uh, and if you have any requests of, of certain PHP functionality or Zend Expressive, what have you, please feel free to leave a comment um, and, and let me know that. And also, remember to tell your friends about BeachCast. Have them come out and check us out. Thank you very much.